night, a Fox 59 special investigation. We have answers directly from the bail project tonight on who it bails out and how that charitable bail organization is making those significant decisions. Yeah, Fox 59 started investigating this group after we found out it paid to release at least three people who are now accused of violent crimes, including murder and stabbings of police officers. Well, now our Courtney Crown is revealing and uncovering why the bail project says it does not know how many people reoffend while they're out of jail. Watch. As I watched him walk towards the airport terminal, I had no idea. I had just embraced my son for the last time. Nikki Sterling never dreamed she would stand before state lawmakers beside her son's photo to advocate for regulation of charitable bail. I was more dismayed to learn that the bail project operates without regulation, meaning they can bail out whomever they want. On October 1st, Nikki's son, Dylan McGinnis, was shot and killed in Indianapolis. The alleged shooter, Travis Lang, was on pretrial release for four prior charges before his murder. The bail project paid for bail in two of those cases, and a bail bonds agent paid for the other. They're not doing the research on the probable cause, so that tells me they're also not looking into other areas. Fox 59 questioned David Gaspar, the bail project's national operations director, on why the bail project doesn't read the probable cause affidavit before paying a cash bail. This sworn document details allegations from police against a person. So we don't actually have access to the probable cause. So we use what resources are available to us. So we are looking at the jail lookup in my case. To clarify, anyone is able to come down to the clerk's office and get the probable cause affidavit. For most people, there is a small fee, but that information is public most of the time. I got these in mere minutes. For us to have to make that public request in order for us to have to wait for that, there's more and more harm being inflicted upon an individual. The bail project paid Marcus Garvin's bond in January 2021 after he was accused of stabbing a random person at a gas station. Judge Chatrice Flowers lowered his bond in this case from $30,000 surety to 1500 cash, which made him eligible for the bail project's help. Again, we bring up the probable cause affidavit in the prior case. Marcus Garvin began swinging at him, but he did not realize he had a knife and that Marcus Garvin had stabbed him. I'm just curious why this guy is the guy. I can't say that that wouldn't have been impactful and that we wouldn't have taken that into consideration, that it wouldn't have changed the decision that we had made. But not having that information, we moved forward with what we did have available. We knew that we reached out to us contacts. We knew that we actually asked them, you know, what was going on? Where do you believe that we actually have the opportunity to help? Garvin is now accused of murdering his ex-girlfriend, Christy Holt, and dismembering her body. The bail project points to their own data showing nearly 95% of their clients made their court dates. However, we can't confirm those numbers because the organization won't provide us with the names of those they bailed out. What I do know is that we're not actually talking about a thousand people who reoffended. We're not talking about 800 that have reoffended. We're not even talking about seven or six. Do you have more though than anecdotal evidence that it's not, that it is just a handful and that it's not hundreds of people? It's not an answer I can provide today for the same reasons that were stated earlier. There's no uniform system in Indiana that allows anybody to look at that data and that information. Since 2019, $250,000 of Marion County taxpayer money went to this organization. The bail project says none of that funding ever went toward paying bail. We have requested the organization's financial records to confirm that's the case. The bail project is still considering our request. Going forward, Gaspar says they do not have plans to seek more taxpayer dollars in Marion County. I would just like to kind of go back to the beginning of how all this started. It wasn't necessarily about taxpayers' dollars as much as it was about public safety. At the request of Marion Superior Court judges, the bail project says its staff is currently investigating the number of clients who reoffended while on pretrial release. It's Nikki's plea the bail project takes into account the details of each case. They need to do more work on their end. The bail project answered many more questions during our nearly one hour one on one sit down interview. You can find that interview in its entirety on our website, fox59.com. 
Reporting in downtown Indianapolis, Courtney Crown, Fox 59 Investigates. Courtney, thank you so much. The Marion County Superior Court suspended its support of the bail project December 16th. The judges scheduled a January 10th meeting with the bail project, requesting that they deliver a list of outcomes to the judges. That meeting got canceled because the court said the bail project still needed more time to gather that data. The court gave them 60 days. Of course, it's a topic we'll continue to explore tomorrow night as we talk with those in the criminal justice system and with state lawmakers about what they feel are the best ways to change the system moving forward. You can watch part two of our special report right here tomorrow night on Fox 59 News at 10.